throat swabs, nasopharyngeal collection, throat cultures, and rapid strep testing lecture. So why do we perform throat culture and rapid strep tests? They are frequently performed, especially in the wintertime months. The purpose is to identify strep throat. Strep throat is caused by a bacteria called Streptococcus pyogenes and is referred to as group A strep or gas. If left untreated, the infection can cause many complications such as rheumatic fever and scarlet fever. Symptoms of strep A are sore throat, tonsillar exudate, as you can see here, fevers, chills, and about 20% of school children are carriers but do not have any symptoms. Group A strep is streptococcus pyogenes, meaning that the bacteria is a circular bacteria in chains is treated with antibiotics to avoid complications such as bacterial endocarditis, rheumatic fever, and acute glomerular nephritis. The most common antibiotics are in the amoxicillin group and oftentimes will be treated with amoxil. This is the heart of a 44-year-old woman who had rheumatic fever because of untreated strep infection, which caused congestive heart failure for about one year, and she eventually passed away. So this whole black area is dead in tissue. Strep pyogenes, or group A strep, so it is a gram positive, so it's purple in color. It's beta hemolytic, so it likes the sheep's blood agar. It likes to grow on that. It is round in shape, and usually it's in either pairs or chains, hence the name streptococcus. Performing the throat culture, collecting the specimen is very important to get proper collection of the specimen. We use a sterile Decron swab this, to swab the tonsils and the fossae. We do not want to touch the tongue or any other mouth surfaces as this can affect our results. So a lot of times we go in and we use a tongue depressor as seen here and we swab the back of the mouth in a circular motion which we will view a slide in a couple of slides that will show us that. But it's important to instruct the patient on what you're going to be doing prior to approaching the patient. Instruct the patient to tilt their head back with their mouth open and relax their tongue. Sometimes with children, you will have to have them lay down as when you go towards them with the swab, they will try and escape with their head by leaning further and further back. Depress the tongue with the tongue depressor and touch the tip of the swab to the tonsils and any inflamed areas in the back of the throat. Do not touch the swab with the tongue or the inside of the cheek or touch the swab with the lips. Return the swab to the holder, label the swab appropriately, and perform the rapid strep testing on one swab and save the other one for possible culture. It is important to note that we should always collect two swabs when doing a throat swab. And the reason being is we can do the rapid strep testing right away and then send the other one for culture. Typically, if we only had one swab, we should do the culture first. And a lot of times in our smaller labs, we don't have the ability to swab for culture right there. So that's why it's important to collect two swabs. Rapid strep tests used to screen for group A strep. If the test is positive, treat patients for group A streptococcus. If the test is negative, submit the swab to the lab for a throat culture. 
Throat culture will determine if strep A is present in small numbers, which can lead to a false negative on your rapid strep, or if there is a different throat pathogen that is present outside of the streptococcus. The swab for rapid strep tests do not require transport media. Swabs for throat cultures do require transport media. So after you do the rapid strep test, typically that swab we are throwing away in the garbage. If using a dual swab system, place one swab in the transport media and one swab outside the transport media. Consult the lab on how the transport swab for rapid strep and the culture should be done. Performing the throat culture, collect the specimen in a sterile Dacron swab, swab the tonsils or the fossae, do not touch the tongue or the mouth of any surfaces. We then would inoculate the media, we would use the swab for the first section of the plate, and then you would streak with your inoculating loops in your other quadrants. You would typically we would use blood agar for streptococcus and then we would place a bacitracin disc to see the reactivity and we would also stab, put stabs in the agar which is not always normal. We would incubate the culture for th at 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. Typically the temperature of the incubator is 37 degrees Celsius. And we reduce the oxygen by 5 to 10 per to 5 to 10 percent carbon dioxide in a candle jar as you see here. Interpreting the culture results, so if beta hemolysis is there, the bacitracin inhibits growth around the bacitracin disc. As you can see, beta hemolysis has happened throughout the blood agar plate, and the bacitracin disc has developed a field around it. Nasal pharyngeal swabs. We frequently do these to detect influenza A and B, pertussis or whooping cough, and they, both of these are very highly contagious, so it's important to wear face shields and gloves while doing collection. And you even want to do this with rapid strep swabbing as some patients will have a gag reflex and cough or spit in your face as you are collecting these. What transport media is used for nasal pharyngeal swabs? If you are testing for influenza A or B, you would use a M4RT because it is viral. And for pertussis, this is a bacterium, so you would use an Amy's with charcoal because it is an anaerobic microorganism. MP swab procedure, assemble correct supplies depending on what you are testing for as we discussed in the previous slide. Identify your patient by name and date of birth. Ask the patient to blow their nose first. Pull the swab out of the packaging maintaining a sterile technique so don't rub it against your counter or your gloves or your gown and slightly bend the swab a little bit as you are dragging it out of the container because the nasal pharyngeal passage is not completely straight. Tilt the patient's head back a little, insert the swab into the nostril. You should insert the swab straight in the nostril and not in an upward direction. The swab should go all the way to the back of the nasal pharyngeal cavity about the length of the patient, about the length from the patient's nose to their ear. Do not force the swab if it does not go in smoothly. So here is a picture, so from the nose to the ear, you do not want to go in an upward motion because it would go up towards the brain and that really hurts. So you want to make sure that you go semi-straight in 
into the back of the nasopharyngeal area.